Oh yeah, never, never, I, never a million years coming from Oklahoma. I think I'd end up in a, in a jungle like this down here in Skid Row. You know what I mean? Or anywhere close to it. You how, know, how long have you been down here? Uh, I came in March the 18th would have been my touchdown date uh, in California. I, I came to, uh, I came and got clean in rehab and then got out of rehab and relapsed again. Oh, so you came out here for a rehab? Came out here for rehab. Yeah, somebody sold me. Somebody sold me a dream out in Malibu. So. Um, yeah, they, uh, they did it pretty good. It was a nice little place, but I ended up going back over there once and then, um, met a, met a girl and, um, you know how it goes with a girl. You kind of tend to follow where she flocks. So, um, we ended up leaving rehab and coming down closer to Skid Row. And, uh, that ended very abruptly after I moved in with her and I ended up out on the street. What, so, what is your drug? Huh? What is your, what is your drug? Uh, fentanyl methamphetamine. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I came to get clean because my little brother, he killed himself back in February of uh, 20, 2020. It's about to be 2024. So 2023, he, he took his life. Yeah. For what reason? I don't even, can't even explain it. It's very super abrupt. Um, How do you do it? He shot, he shot fentanyl intravenously. Took one big hot shot. And uh, just kind of checked out. You think it was a suicide attempt? Uh, from he was also my best friend too. Um, I don't think anybody could have ever been closer. We had our own place together. We did everything together. Um, from everything that I knew about him and the way that we both used drugs together, absolutely. You know, um, he was very cautious about things. Like it, it wasn't just a a random OD. I don't no way. Like he had the tolerance built up and everything to where, you know, um, he had to have done too much to be able to, uh, not wake up like that. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, we were both at the end of our runs and I, I don't know. We, we kind of, I told, I, I, there's a lot of regret right there. I, I told him, told him that we couldn't be around each other anymore. We were starting to do some bad things to each other. And, like uh, he was stealing from me, and so I started start stealing from him. And um, lo and behold, I guess he just uh, didn't want to be here anymore after that, you know. So um, that's like that's been a lot to process, you know. I'd say. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, life life goes on, you know, and uh, still have to keep my feet moving, you know. As long as as long as I'm breathing, I have to do something about it, you know? Um, and while you've been down here living on the streets, you, you have a tent or you're just on the street? I'm on the street, on the street. I don't even have a tent right now. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't really trust it enough to, uh, to put, put a tent down anywhere because you don't ever, never know when you when your stuff's going to get moved or broken into, or you're going to lose it again. So it's gotta be hard when it's cold and raining. Yeah. It's been pretty cold, man. Yeah. Uh, luckily Oklahoma is, endure i've been able to endure the weather there but the california is a different type of temperature too and a whole different it's a different world out here man it really is it's it's crazy you know it's a total different world it's a different scene different hood different everything you know how are you making money uh right now i can be completely honest about everything mm -hmm. so I, I boost for the most part that's the most common thing that people yeah do. yeah yeah I, I boost um i try to not at the most but like if we're being honest, it's an everyday thing, you know. Um, you you got to be able to eat and feed uh, yourself. So how, how do you how do you boost? How do you steal from a? So how do I boost? How do I steal from like a department store, like a Target or something like that? Uh, so if first I would just walk in and grab the stuff off the shelves and um, walk straight out, and uh, that would be it. So and you've been I, caught, huh? Have you been caught? Still haven't been. I mean, I've been caught by employees and everything like that, but not by the police yet. Never been taken in on a boosting charge or anything like that. Um, still do it every day. Uh, so knock on wood. Let's hope that the the ball keeps rolling like that. That uh, nothing help, nothing uh, unravels. But did, did, um, you, did you ever see yourself being somebody who's like surviving by stealing from? No, man. Stores? From where I'm from, we don't do that type of stuff. You know, we. Uh, I grew up in Oklahoma. I'm born and raised from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and we don't. We're not, we, we, we don't look down, even in the, kind of the drug world, we kind of look down upon that what, type of what stuff. What was your family like growing up? My family? Uh, it, was the, it was divided. So when my parents had been divorced since I was about six weeks old, um, 
my dad, he uh, had sole custody over me for the most part. I lived with my mom from about 12 to 15 and then uh, finished up with my dad and then moved back down with my mom, lived with her from about 18 to 22 and off and on through my 20s. Um, But other than that, family life was... uh, sporadic let's just say that i don't i can't tell you i've never eaten a full meal with my family or anything like that my mom and dad have never sat down with me at dinner table or anything so um it's always been divided very divided uh which is i don't know it's kind of hard to think about not not being able to have that like every you see everybody else they've always eaten dinner with their, their dad, mom and dad what, and their what was family. christmas like with your family christmas christmas is Christmas is a big deal on on my on my mom's side, um, on my dad's side not so much. They, they, my grandpa was a Jehovah's Witness, so he didn't really ever, uh, he didn't really ever uh, practice holidays or anything like that. Um, mom's side, we're big on Christmas. We always do it big. We make sure we get, we get do the full Italian food special and make sure we get all get, get stuffed and. So how, did you, how did you spend Christmas this year? A couple of days ago. Uh, let's see. I was sick, cold, and in the rain. So uh, by myself too. So it was a, uh, it was definitely not the not the best Christmas. But um, I'm still glad that I'm breathing. You know what I mean? Hey, uh, have you OD'd? N- uh, I not purposely. No. Um, per- I, I I don't I don't think so. No, I don't think I have. Can't, can't recall an event where I actually have. Uh, I I don't really do drugs as m- much anymore to get get higher, get fucked up. Is in like I've got a lot of pain, like physical pain. I've been over th- was over three hundred pounds most of my life. And, really? Uh, yeah. So um, I was kind of kind of spoiled and always got to have the full load of the kitchen and everything like that, and didn't really have any much discipline when it came to food or diet or anything like that, and so. I was in a size 42 by the time I was in fourth grade. Wow. Yeah. So, um, in, which is crazy to me, but, um, when you're, when you're, when I guess when you're that size and everything like that, things, things change for you. So, um, you finished school. Yeah. I finished school. I, I, uh, actually graduated full on, on time. Um, I don't know how I did that. I pulled that out of my ass. I ended up getting, gaining like 10 credits. I, I was considered a freshman in my senior year of uh, high school and kind of just made it happen. You know, I've always been a, 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 somehow, some way I've been able to survive anything or skate by or get, get through any kind of thing that I need to get through just by the hair of my teeth. You graduated high school. Huh? You graduated high school. I did. Yeah, yeah, I did, actually did. Uh, um, when did drug use start for you? My drug use started when I was about 12 or 11 years old. Uh, started with a joint, um, me and my stepbrother. We smoked a joint out back before Thanksgiving, and then uh, um, that just kind of accelerated from uh, ended up finding some pills, and then found found some pills, found out the name of them, looked around for them at school. Somebody else had some, and it turned out to be Adderall. I was a big Adderall head in high school, and everything like that. So that didn't realize that Adderall was actually full on speed and everything like that, but. Um, what for whatever it did for me, uh, it kind of filled that void that I've been looking for. Like I always felt like I was missing a connection with something. You know what I mean? Like I felt I always felt a little bit dis, always disconnected or set apart from everybody else, just from the the shit that I went through when I was so young. Um, when I was when I was three, I was in the Oklahoma City bombing. I survived the Murray Building bombing. Yeah. Where, where where were you in the bombing happened? I was in the daycare. So I don't know if you were in over the YMCA daycare was at. Um, so they had the, basically you had the Murray building right here and then the, this is where the truck was parked, the YMCA and then the, the daily Oklahoma, which was the newspaper. Um, and where the blast was in was actually directed at the building, but the, the, Mer- the daycare, YMCA daycare was actually just as close. And so, uh, I was three years old. I'll never forget it. It was, it was a crazy day, man. It was a really crazy day. What happened to the building you were in? Huh? What happened to the building? <laughs> Not every fucking window that was in there. I'll tell you that. Uh, I, I don't, I'll never forget it. looking up. Actually, about ceilings like that, about that tall, looking up, and there's furniture and shit all like everywhere, and uh, people running in, grabbing people, and wrapping us all up in towels and everything. And 
the ceiling's falling in on us, and I'm just kind of wondering, like, what the fuck is this happening? You know, like, it dazed me that well. You were like, three years old. Yeah, I was three years old. But you, three, you remember it? Yeah, everything. Every single, single thing about it. I guess uh, you'd remember something like that. Yeah, yeah. My, my, my dad dropped me off about 7 a.m. that morning, and um, from there, I think I ate my sausage biscuit that he gave me and played around with the kids, and, and then they sat us down to read us a story, taking a nap, and... Uh, you know, I remember looking outside to the left and paying attention to the story and then coming to and just telling you what I told you there. There's people running and rushing in and it's like a damn war scene in there and um, the ceiling was falling in. I couldn't understand why the ceiling was falling in. And, like, and I was like, wow, what the hell? I, of course, I didn't consciously say, what, wow, what the hell or anything like that. But um, I remember being outside and my mom was actually working about two blocks away. And I'll never forget it because still to this day, it makes me like kind of jump sometimes when she screams my name, just Bradley, Bradley, all, all the way through. I, I, I heard her two blocks away. You know what I mean? Like she, she was, she was there and she found me and she grabbed me and, uh, the towels I was wrapped in were covered in blood from head to toe. I had multiple, multiple lacerations through my head. They in the had, glass? Huh? Yeah. They just literally stuck in my skull. They had to pull it out with, uh, the pliers when I got to the hospital, yeah. but she was able to get me into the hospital um, and in, into into the uh, into the emergency room pretty much before anybody got there because it was all all ambulatory at that point. You know, there's so many people coming in; and they were being shipped to every different which hospital, and uh, so she ran. I'll never forget. It. She had me. I could have been 30, 40 pounds in her hand. She ran in high heels all the way to the car, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, she got me there, and they put me on a stretcher, and I'll never forget, they had to literally restrain me, um, sit on top of me and everything. I don't know why they didn't put me under. I think I was a little too young for anesthesia or something like that, but um, they were prying that glass out of my head, but uh, I had multiple MRIs for me. It gave me a, a TBI as a brain, brain injury, uh, traumatic brain injury to my left temporal lobe, which has to deal with processing emotions, impulses, and uh, impulse, impulse, pro anything that has to do with um, situations and scenes, and I kind of, uh, I have to navigate through a little bit differently or slower sometimes. Uh, but then at first, also, I had, had to learn how to use a fork and all kinds of stuff again. You know. But uh, like I said, I'd always kind of felt separated, like, just distant from everybody because I, I don't know it, that was so such a heavy moment in my life that like nothing ever seemed as exciting or intriguing you know what I mean so um, when, are, are you are you a, an adrenaline junkie yeah I, I, my my therapists have told me that I am a, yeah. a dopamine junkie I, anything I can do to get a dopamine release I will mm. um, so that goes back to what we were talking about just a second ago is that. Once I found that first drug, the one thing that made my heart flutter in the right way, I uh, I got a hold of it. You know what I mean? And so yeah, that was that was crystal meth. Uh, it was actually Adderall at the time. I didn't I didn't search out the crystal meth until I was probably eighteen or nineteen. But um, in that whole meantime, I was doing other bullshit, you know, petty crimes and stuff like that during high school to. Uh, for no reason like I grew up good I had everything I was taken care of I just I wanted something to do everything else seems so boring you know what I mean so um and I didn't it's not like I didn't make bad grades or anything like that uh so yeah I, I graduated high school on time from there should have gone to college but I didn't um and are drugs why you didn't I think it was more in fact of the reason that I Probably, drugs probably, but I just, I, I like, I, I always wanted to go to, to college. Like, I wanted to go, I, at one point, I wanted to go to military school and shit. And I don't know, I always felt, it, I was just lazy, you know? There was a lazy part of me. It was very lazy. I didn't have much discipline when I was a kid, hmm. you know? And uh, I feel like a lot of that has uh, set me short in the long run. Uh, I think I could accomplish a little bit more if I would just push myself a little bit harder. How old are you now? 31. 31. Yeah, 31. And and the fact that you're 31, living on Skid Row, homeless, yeah, addicted to drugs, do you, does that make you reconsider some of your decisions? 
Uh, every single one of them. Yeah. Every single what's, one. What's your them. biggest regret? Biggest regret? Uh, following my own lead and not listening to pe people that knew better um, before me or, or even just, I guess my biggest regret is trying to run the show constantly. Yeah. I, I, it's so hard for me to trust some, trust not letting go of the own process. You know, I guess it says in AA that we are, we're, we have to let go of the reins and let, let somebody else do our bidding or our will be, be done by somebody else. But um, it's, it's always just been so hard for me to not have to it just make some bad decisions. You know what I mean? And like, I regret them now because I'm getting tired. You know what I mean? I'm getting tired and I'm ready. I'm ready for a peaceful life. And I want, uh, I want some of my life back. When I was about 20, 25, I got clean for about five years and experienced some, some deep joy in that. And how were those years? They're amazing. They're, they're amazing. I had, so what, what, what is keeping you from trying to get back there? Um, honestly, right now, uh, just facing some of the shit that I've had to do lately. You know what I mean? Like, look at myself and the issues that I've created and all the turmoil that I've caused with me and my family and how to navigate through all that. And um, there's a lot of two-faced shit that I've done and, and things that I've said and that I haven't been able to fall through in, on and, or things that I've wanted to do that I haven't been able to do. And um, I think that... I'm just very disappointed in myself and uh, I'm very fucking ashamed of, of myself and the way I've acted over the last few years, which, because I know I, I've made a lot of selfish, 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 selfish moves and uh, I know I could have done way better. And I think right now I just got my foot on my damn neck and I don't know how to take it off at this point. Are you, are you self-destructive? Very. Yeah. Yeah, very. I don't know. I, and I, I can't say that I enjoy it, but in, in the same way, in the same time, like, I keep doing it. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, I feel stuck. You know what I mean? I feel stuck and I feel uh, alone. You know? It's hard for me to, uh, I can't even get a hold of my family anymore. You know what I mean? I, can, I don't know. I don't even know how to get a hold of my mama. I don't even know her number. You know, my, my, my own, the only family I know, they won't even give me a number to call her on Christmas. You know what I mean? Like, and I, uh, I guess this is the support too. You know, um, I've always felt like I, if I don't have anybody backing me, then like, what's the point? You know, it's, nobody believes in me, then why should I believe in myself? You know what I mean? And so, like, my value and my worth have become where I'm at today. You know. The way I've seen value myself is where I've kind of stuck myself, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, it does. So, well, what's uh, your biggest fear now? Dying alone out here. I don't want that to happen. I do not want that to happen. It scares me because I can see it happening. And knowing what happened to your brother. Yeah, I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd be privy to take my own life. Um, no, but but you're you're smoking fentanyl. Yeah. Or you're injecting fentanyl. No, I don't inject it. You no. smoke it. Yeah, yeah, but smoking fentanyl, you, yeah. you could possibly yeah, yeah, yeah. do that. Um, yeah, and like I said, the only reason I, I really do drugs now is because, like, I have been shot three times and some people, like, I've had major extensive of surgeries and shit. And it, You've been shot yeah. where? Uh, so I was shot in the uh, stomach, 38 hollow points. Somebody tried to kill me. This was where? This was August the 21st of 2021. In Oklahoma? Yeah, in Oklahoma. Um, I was on drugs and gangbanging down there. And uh, so basically, uh, somebody came up and they, I grabbed the gun from them and they tried to pull the trigger and squeeze it to my head. And the gun went off right here and it went bam, bam. One went out and through. And then the other one split my femur in half. And I, uh, and I put... I ended up going into uh, like cardiac arrest through so much pain and uh, los losing a lot of blood. And basically, um, uh, I have a titanium femur now. I woke up on a ventilator six days later with a stent in my heart and all kinds of stuff. And so uh, I suffer from a lot of chronic pain nowadays, too. 
And uh, I think that plays in my drug use a lot too now. Is that, that was a very scary moment in my life after some more traumatic shit happened that I haven't been able to get into yet. Um, I would, at that sober period, I coming off that sober period, I relapsed pretty hard and ended up uh, leaving my 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 ex and leaving a whole house and entire life behind just for drugs. You know what I mean? You know, I pissed away a giant bank account and did all this stuff and. The way that that had ended was me near, near, nearly dying. So, um, I think it scared the shit out of me to see how how uh, how close I did push it on that one. And then, so once I got healed up from that, um, I went back and started doing the same thing. And I think it's it's just crazy how I just can't see how, why I keep going back. And what I don't know what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? I feel like there's something I'm looking for that I can't find. This answer to this, this, this feeling that am I, am I just, what am I chasing here? And, uh, cause I gotta be done eventually or I'm not gonna have time for to live a life. You know what I mean? So. Do you have kids? Not yet. Always wanted to be a dad. Always wanted to be a dad. Have you been in love before? Yeah. Yeah. I sure have. What happened there? Uh, well, one of them. They uh, they didn't love me back as much as they thought thought they did, I guess. And then that happens. The other one, they didn't. Uh, I don't know. She was very way younger, and I don't think she. I think I just uh, kind of pushed her away too much. Pushed her away too hard. I was very uh, got very mean, you know. But yeah, I I I've been in love. It was love's a great thing. Love will inspire you. Love will do amazing things. You know what I mean? It can also be a very, very bad, bad deal too. You when know, it what doesn't mean? work out, huh? When it doesn't work out. Yeah, when it doesn't work out. <laughs> I think it's hard. It can be heartbreaking, man. It can really be heartbreaking. You know, and you have your, oh man, yeah, it can be very heartbreaking. But they, uh, they, there, there were some good girls, and I'm, I'm truly grateful for to have to have had them in my life. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm still in touch with one of them today. She checks on me every once in a while. I want on, get on Facebook and I'll see that she's messaged me and messaged her back and she'll sit there and talk to me for a minute and make sure that I'm okay and all that. So I know that that, there's gotta be something there that, you know, keeps, keeps some, some, keeps some type of hope going in me. Um, but yeah, man, this place, Skid Row is, being a being a southern boy from Oklahoma coming over here into the big city, man, I, I didn't know what I was getting into. You know what I mean? It's dog eat dog out here. It is dog eat dog, big time, and you know it, it is it is something that it's wolf eat wolf. That's what it is. Yes, it is. Alpha eat alpha. You know, <laughs> um, you definitely you definitely got to be on your p's and q's. You better you better know what respect is, and you better know how to make your own money and take care of yourself. Or it, it'll toughen up a white boy. Ain't nobody going to do shit for you around here. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. That's for damn sure. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Hopefully one day I'll make it out and be able to give back to what everybody's getting at, yeah. giving me and do something good for this place around here. It's Brad my biggest hope. You know what I mean? Bradley, what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned in your life? In my life? Uh, Love no matter what. It's a great one. Love no matter what. <laughs> Can't, I mean, why not? Yeah. If you got it, give it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful lesson. Love no matter what. You got mm -hmm. to. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, this is one of those things where you, if you don't, if you don't see, I would rather, I would rather be able to give somebody my last and know that they truly, truly needed it and were grateful for it than to give somebody my last that didn't give a damn about it and just still do it out of love. You know what I mean? Because that way, one way or another, I knew that I was still doing the right thing by me, at least. I don't know about by them, but, mm -hmm. um, and love is not giving love is an action. You know, love's, love's a big, big deal is love's an action. It's, it's not just a, a word, you know, there's a lot that goes behind love. That uh, people, I think, forget about. You know, you can't just tell somebody you love them and not not let them see it. You know what I mean? It goes within the way you treat them, the way you act towards them, the way you talk about them, the way you 
feel about them, the way you look at them, the way your your body language is around them. It's all those things, you know? And there's different levels and there's different ways and I don't know. Love's a big deal to me, man. It is. Uh, I've always, uh, I don't know, I've always chosen love over any, everything. If my, if, if my mom was to pull up right now and say, get in the car, let's go. You know what I mean? Or my ex was pulling and say, get in the car, let's go. Fuck this shit. It's either me or them. I would get in the car immediately. You know what I mean? Just because that's where my heart is. My heart's not right here. My heart's with, with all those other people. So I feel like me being down here, I'm just kind of in a purgatory, you know? And I hope I hope one of them comes and gets me out, you know what I mean? But we, we, we both know that's not going to happen. Well, maybe after this video, they might. Shit, you never know. Maybe, maybe we could maybe we could send them a video, you know, <laughs> see what see what happens. But uh, yeah, maybe they'll finally see how skinny I am, you know. <laughs> I've been over three hundred pounds my entire life, so uh, yeah, maybe they'll come bring me something to eat. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bradley, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I wish you lots of luck. Yeah, thanks, sir.